It's the Snake Eyes and Chuckle Show with your hosts, Snake Eyes and Chuckles. Special guest, Dial Tone. And now, here's Snake Eyes. <coughs> what? Snake Eyes. Uh, this best pal chuckles, yay. Okie dokie then. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a great guest for you tonight. Released in 1986 as part of the fifth series, available in 1987 and discontinued in 1988. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage, Dial Tone. <laughs> Yay. Welcome to the program, Dial Town. It's great to see you. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. It's great to be here. So, Dial Town says here, before you settled on your code name, he considered both Squelch and Hotline. Correct, Chuck. Larry Hama himself told Hasbro. If we went with Hotline instead of Dial Tone, they should change the Laser Troopers name to Sci-Fi instead of Hotspot, which they did anyway. All right then, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure, Chuck. My name is Jack Marley. I'm from Eugene, Oregon. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say uh, Jack Marley? That's right, I did, Chuck. Any chance you're related to the famous comic book writer? <laughs> sort of. I am in fact named after Jack Marley, comic book writer and letterer, who worked for Marvel, DC, and Archie Comics. And we thank you for your fine work, Mr. Morelli. Anyway, my primary military specialty is radio telecommunication. My secondary military specialty is infantry. Telecommunications, you say? You think you could help me out with my cell phone plan? I think I'm getting screwed. Um, I don't really, uh... So anyway, how did you get started in telecommunications? I'd built my own crystal set by the time I was 10. By 14, I was part of a CB net and had my own ham radio station by 16. We had a crystal set, too. But that all came to an end when we lost contact with that Jesse guy. Remember that snake? That bald guy? Is he Malcolm's dad? I made all my own equipment, buying parts with money earned, bagging groceries. Ah, an honest, hard-working fellow, are ya? Is that why you enlisted? I saw the Army as a means to further my education in my chosen field, and I quickly found that instead of a stepping stone, it was a goal in itself. Manning radio in the field wasn't just passing time. It was a job with a purpose. If you wanted to work with a purpose, you should have signed up with Deep Six. He's actually told me a lot of scary stories about getting lost down below. One of the scariest things that can happen to you out in the field is to lose contact with your base. That means you're alone. No artillery support, no strikes, no medvac, no extraction, nothing. The Calvary ain't coming till the man with the radio tells him to. All right, Mr. Happy. Let's have a look at said field equipment. Chuck. This is the 9mm Parabellum submachine pistol with silencer. This here is my Anti Scrambler communication backpack. Very interesting. So, Dialto, as I understand it, you, like so many other top-tier figures, 
have a 100% original sculpt. I do, Chuck. 100% original. My entire body mold was reused to create special missions Brazil dial tone, or version 2. Used again in 1986 for Sonic Fighters dial tone, or version 3. And used again for versions 5, 6, and 7. Wow, they really got their use out of that mold. I'm also told the legs and waist were used in 2001 to create Crossfire, and the chest and arms were used in 2002 to create Dusty version 5. All true, Chuck. I got 11 versions in total. Seven good ones. Well, folks, we're just about out of time for today. We'd like to thank Dial Tone for coming out. And, of course, our sponsors at G.I. Joe Collectors Club Canada, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Good night, everybody. The Snake Eyes and Chuckle Show was filmed live in front of a three and three quarter inch audience. For a transcript, send a self-addressed stamped envelope and two flag points to transcripts. Care of the Snake Eyes and Chuckle Show. Special thanks to Mr. Special thanks to Mr. Kenza Danny and Graham Bauer.